So is the market about to crash? Well, for some people, it might already be here. Anyway, let's get into it. Hey everyone, this is Chris. Welcome to the channel. This is all about growing your account and growing your mind. So uh, I hope everything's going great with you and, and everything's all right. Um, it's been a bit scary out there and it all depends which stocks you're in. And now we're talking about market crash because uh, although on the surface it seems like you know uh, the markets keep going up and, and we're doing okay, uh, it really depends what you're in. Because basically what's going on is because Apple, Nvidia, Microsoft, Google, Amazon, you know, some of these like really big uh, mega cap companies are, are moving up. It sort of looks like everything's going up, but it's, it's just not the case. Um, some stocks have been really taking a lot of beating. And uh, in fact, uh, I started making videos about this because when I saw with um, the price action of Rivian, uh, which reached the very, very top of like 179 uh, and, and was approaching, you know, basically becoming the second largest car maker in the world without actually uh, making any cars or, or selling any cars, <laughs> basically. Um, I, I knew something was up and it felt like um, very uh, dot-com bubbly and also very much like pets.com. And, and that's a, a famous company from the dot-com bubble that, that burst that sort of basically went from, you know, making oodles of cash in, in the market to basically zero uh, in less than a year. So I, I don't think Rivian is necessarily going to go to zero. Um, but, but I do think it represents the sort of craziness in the market that we're seeing. And, and, I, and I want to talk about Rivian and all the other stocks in the market um, at the same time. So I think it's all related. So um, first I want to mention is, you know, it, is there a crash? Well, I, I said before, it depends what you're in. And, and also too, I'd love to hear in the comments if you're in some of these, because it's certainly a lot of pain. But if you take a look at some of the stocks, and, and we'll start with this one. Um, this is Nikola. This is kind of the famous one. Um, it, it was basically a, a fraud situation where... Uh, they uh, had an electric vehicle and um, it didn't work. Actually, actually, it wasn't electric, I think it was hydrogen. Uh, and it didn't work. Um, and uh, so what they did is they rolled it down a hill <laughs> and, and used gravity to demonstrate their truck, which is you know, obviously not a good thing. Um, but I mentioned that one because you take a look, you know, at one point this was trading, you know, uh, approaching 70. Uh, it's currently trading around 11. So that is a major, major fall off for Nikola. Um, and and I, I mentioned that one first because that's most egregious uh, out of a lot of these, but uh, this is important to note because we're going to get into the Rivian news in a second. Um, you know, if you're in Robinhood, uh, at one point this traded up in the 70s, now we're currently trading at 28. Uh, I don't know if Robinhood is going to keep going down. I mean, they, they do have a real company and, and they do, you know, have users and stuff, but um, the stock looks very, very weak right now. Uh, Zillow was actually one of my favorites, to be honest. Um, I, I think Zillow is a very interesting play. I want to get in real estate. Uh, I mean, I use Zillow, the company itself, the website and stuff, but as it turns out, you know, they just really bumbled up their iBuying program. Uh, this, certain, this thing was trading, you know, around uh, 208 at the top, currently trading at 56. That is a lot of pain. Uh, Zillow, Alibaba, another one of the stocks that I, I myself really liked as well. Um, you know, numbers wise, they look good, but you know, there was no way to know that what the Chinese government was going to do and, and still doing actually, in fact. And, you know, this one was trading like as, as high as uh, the 300s, really, um, currently trading at 140. I mean, there's just a lot of pain in the market. Peloton's another example. Um, again, you know, this one uh, was a pandemic stock. People couldn't go to the gym. So people were, you know, using Pelotons at home. This one at one point was trading at 171, currently trading now at 47 uh, and continuing to fall. Um, you also have Teladoc, another very similar one as well. I mean, you, you guys have seen this, right? Um, this one traded at 308, uh, currently trading uh, at 116, and one more, another one, which, which there's a whole bunch of these on the market. Um, AI, uh, and, and this was a very, very interesting stock because it's in the right kind of uh, industry that you would want to get in, right? Artificial intelligence um, was trading at 183, currently trading at 39. Um, I mentioned all of these stocks because I think Rivian really sort of represents the pinnacle of this kind of stuff, this sort of craziness. And, and, and full disclosure, I mean, like these things like, you know, Peloton, Zillow, uh, AI, they've really piqued my interest, right? I mean, um, Peloton's a real company. They, <laughs> they, they really do sell things, right? It's, it's not, you know, my imagination, but, um, you know, it doesn't necessarily mean that you want to pay these crazy prices for stocks, right? You, you got to match. Uh, the financials to the stock price if, if you want to do well in the market and consistently do well. Now with Rivian, I have no problem if people were making money on the way up. No, no problem with that at all. Uh, I will say, however, myself, I didn't get it into it, um, mostly because I, I knew it was way overvalued and 
I would not feel comfortable holding it overnight. Now day trading, I probably should have, right? I, I just didn't. I just I always felt like the floor would fall out at any moment. Uh, and, and you know, just one day you wake up and it's down 40% because it's just so overvalued. Uh, and, and essentially that's sort of what we're seeing with Rivian. Um, and and I, I mentioned the, uh, Rivian and related to the market crash because news just came out uh, yesterday, today's a Saturday and yesterday was Friday. Uh, that really doesn't sound good. So the first one is, um, uh, one of the people, or some of the people, many of the people who you know really are bullish on Rivian always like to brag that Ford is back in Rivian. Uh, news just came out that uh, Ford has canceled uh, a deal that they had with Rivian to make a joint vehicle that is now off the table. Uh, and then the other thing is to, now, who, you know, take this on with a grain of salt, but just uh, Kramer and you know, CNBC, he, he's saying that look, uh, Ford is probably looking to sell uh, Rivian, their stake in Rivian. So who knows if that's true, but um, you know, this person is connected and, and does hear rumors and things of that nature. And, and you know, I wouldn't necessarily doubt that, that if Ford's looking at their shares going, oh, you know what, <laughs> we, we could use that cash, you know, if we could, if we get out now, but uh, I, you know, they're probably on a lockup still, so I don't think they can even sell even if they wanted to, but uh, that would be a thing that's uh, looming, you never know. Um, and then the other one too, which I think is a really big one, and that's why I mentioned uh, Nikola first with the, you know, the, the fraud that was rolling trucks down the hill, um, it turns out that uh, Amazon had a driver test out one of the uh, Rivian sort of delivery vans. This is a, probably the biggest bull case for Rivian is, you know, they have a contract with Amazon to sell 100,000 vehicles over 10 years. Um, but as it turns out, uh, the range of these vehicles is, was not accurate. So what Rivian told Amazon uh, is not accurate. Basically, there's a 40% decrease in the range. Um, if you uh, turn on the air conditioning or turn on the heat, uh, while you're operating the vehicle, it really, really decreases the range. Um, and I think that's a pretty big deal. We're not talking about, you know, like 10%, 5%, we're talking about like a 40% difference. Uh, the other thing is too, is, is it looks like they'll need to add cameras to the thing. I don't think that's a big deal, but um, Amazon's basically, you know, now that this thing is uh, happening or happening or happened, <laughs> it's all public, et cetera. Now it's time to get down to business and start building these cars, uh, uh, delivery vans, because you got the money now and they need to start making sure these are up to spec. So um, I, I think both of these negative news is are, uh, news I should say, are very, very bad for Rivian. Uh, the stock is already falling. Um, one of the things that uh, I wanna to, want to show you on the chart here, you can see um, there was so much fervor on this thing. And you know, in my wildest dreams, I, I thought maybe Rivian would go up, maybe, you know? Um, it was already too expensive at IPO for me, so that's why I didn't really buy any in the beginning. Um, because when uh, Rivian first announced their IPO, uh, I think they, they were saying like, um, we made videos about it, they were like saying 50s and 60s, and then suddenly we jumped up to the 70s, and then, and then the stock opens up at 95. So like, it, it basically just doubled in like a, a couple of days, the price of this thing. And I was already saying like, you know, 50, 60 seems a little bit high, and then we're open at 95, which is just, you know, ludicrous. So I didn't even really get it on the first day, because I was thinking, oh, you know, it's already overvalued, I don't want to mess with this thing. But it kept riding up for the next couple of days, which really shows the fervor in the market. Hence, I started talking about crash. Uh, peaked out at around 178, I believe. Uh, it's currently trading at 128. And you know, one of the things I, I think, um, you know, just looking at it and, and comparing it to the car market, uh, car market cap of, of car companies, and you can see it here on the list, you know, um, I, I would probably say, you know, Rivian's maybe closer to like, uh, a neo valuation, something of that nature, or, or maybe something like um, in the middle, uh, like a Honda, something like that. So maybe around 50 million, or sorry, 50 billion, but um, you know, something like, like, like what it's trading at now, it's, it's just way too high. <laughs> um, and and uh, I, I wanted to just uh, share this with you because I think it's all related. Um, if we uh, see people really want to get into this Rivian thing, they're like, you know what? Uh, I believe in this company. I believe, you know, paying for the future. Uh, I don't care what kind of money they earn. Uh, it doesn't matter to me at all. And, and I'm just gonna throw it up, my money in the market because, you know, the stock keeps going up. That sort of represents there's just way too much craziness in the market and it's sort of like basically trading Dogecoin at this point. Um, and, uh, you know, when I look at around the other stocks and, and I see that valuations are coming back to reality, be it with, you know, like Zillow, be it with DraftKings, be it with Alibaba. Well, Alibaba's a little different, that's more of a, um, you know, regulatory thing they're facing in China. But when, when I when I see the sort of, you know, coming back down to earth kind of thing, I'm, I'm thinking, you know, for some people, the crash is already here. I mean, uh, you know, if you were the kind of person that was, was buying all of these, you know, high flying growth stocks at the top back in February, March, and, and you know, you're, you're feeling good because everything uh, goes nothing but up, 
um, it's been a real tough year in the market for you, right? And, um, you know, and, and I think this is a good lesson for people and I'd love to hear, you know, your experience in this, but, um, you know, you got to diversify. Uh, sometimes you got to get some value stocks. I know it's not exciting to buy Walmart. <laughs> um, it's, it's not exciting to buy, you know, Pfizer or, or not exciting to buy, you know, what's another like Coca-Cola, right? But, but you want to, you know, mix your portfolio around because if, if you're so heavily into these stocks like a Rivian, et cetera, uh, and aren't selling, um, at the top, then, then, then you're buying the top instead of you're in a real trouble. So one of the, one of the lessons I would say as well, um, is, you know, when you're in these sort of situations, which is basically a bubble, know that you're in a bubble, right? Uh, that's extremely important because you can actually do really well in a bubble. You, you really can. I mean, if you, uh, bought this Rivian stuff at 95 and, and you sold in the one, you know, seventies or whatever, that's actually a very, very good trade in a couple of days and, and congrats. Um, the problem is a lot of people sort of get caught up and I myself get caught up in this stuff as well. Um, you know, it's, it's something I always joke with my wife about how it's so tough to catch the very top of any stock or any trade because you're just like, oh, it's going to go up more. Oh, it's still going up. And you just like, you know, kind of was watching it, watching it. And then you, you get so enamored with, you know, how high can this thing possibly go? But, you know, so it's always just a good lesson and, and comes with experience. Um, things just can't go up forever. I'll say, however, here's a big however. Um, the other thing is I, I started talking about, you know, some of these stocks that are really coming down. The other thing that really signals a peak to me as, as well is, you know, not only do we have, you know, Rivian sort of representing the whole fervor of the market, and this is sort of a bellwether stock, um, but, you know, I, and I, I was an Apple, I sold my Apple, but, um, you know, Apple's reaching all time highs. Uh, also to Nvidia is going crazy and, and also, you know, Roblox is going crazy. So, you know, it, it's, you know, how much higher can things go? I guess that's what I'm saying is, is, you know, Rivian's already starting to come down and, you know, is Apple going to go up another, what, one or 2%? Is Apple going to go up 30%? I mean, obviously Apple's not going to double. It's not going to happen. But, um, and so I just, I just feel like we're at the top. It's starting to come down. However, um, you know, who knows? Maybe Apple goes up until February, January, February, something like that. Um, and, uh, you know, a lot of these other stocks will be feeling pain uh, for a while. So um, that's just sort of my thoughts on this thing. I, I, that's why, you know, perhaps in the very beginning, I think for some people, they're already feeling that, that, you know, basically feels like a crash. And, and for other people, you know, it's still uh, kind of shaky because if you're in other stuff, you know, for me, um, some of my more growthier stuff have been taking a hit. Uh, but my Apple and Nvidia has really saved me, <laughs> um, and, and Facebook as well has been a really good one as well. Um, you know, I took a hit earlier, but I just kind of you know looked at the numbers, and, and that's the other thing too. Is what you got to do is um, if you really want to protect yourself from these crazy, crazy you know downturns, if you're in companies that have you know reasonable P/E ratios that aren't incredibly overvalued, then they're not really going to crash that much, uh, and and they'll eventually come back. So I, I'm. You know, Facebook, Apple, when these things pull back, they, they're, they're bringing in so much revenue. I'm, I'm not that worried. You're just, you're just not. But, um, you know, when you're investing in things that aren't bringing in enough revenue to, you know, be profitable, essentially, uh, you got to get worried. I mean, and, and just, um, you know, be careful with that stuff. Uh, and I guess that's all I have to say about that. But anyway, um, I just want to share all this stuff with you. And um, I'd love to get your thoughts on, on what you think what's going on with Rivian. Um, do you think this is going to go literally go down to like the 50, 40s and 50s or, or do you think um, people are still into this stuff and are sort of sort of, you know, uh, into the market with fervor and, and uh, the word that people like to use is froth and, and are, you know, excited to keep buying the top because they believe it's still going to go up. So love to hear your thoughts and um, I do appreciate watching and I'll catch you in the next video.